And welcome to the Exxon, everyone. I am Rob McConnell, and we're coming to you from our broadcast center and our studios in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. Now, if you'd like to send me an email, it's very simple, exxon at exxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And we're coming to you right now, live and around the world, like I said, from our broadcast center and studios in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada, which is right on the shores of Lake Ontario. We're about 15 minutes away from Niagara Falls, New York, 40 minutes away from Hamilton, and about an hour and a half, depending on traffic, to Toronto, Ontario. And of course, the X-Zone is on the, uh, let me see, we are on Simul TV, we are on uh, Talkstar Radio Network, and many, many other radio stations and audio video platforms. Once again, if you'd like to send me an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com. My first guest tonight, Exxon Nation, is a gentleman that we've had the pleasure of having on the show before. His name is Gary Wimmer. And uh, Gary is going to be talking to us today about lithomancy. And Gary, welcome back to the Exxon. Great having you with us on this, our very first show of the fall season 2022-23. Always a pleasure to be with you, Rob. Love what you do. Love Thanks, your your show love what the, the guests you have you uh, certainly keep people's curiosity going so my hats off to you brother love what you do tell our listening audience a little bit about yourself my friend well i'm uh i've been a musician most of my life i was electrical mm -hmm. engineer in college defense work uh was the only job that was available in the 1970s vietnam war right so i tried to play music and in college i started studying a lot about psychic ability in 1977, out of the clear blue, I had a near-death experience, which I wrote about in my book here, A Second in Eternity, that really blew me away. And to this day, fascinates me. And as I've, I think I've told you before, Rob, as I was coming back into my body during that experience, I saw all these flashcards mm -hmm. of uh, the future, and they're now coming true. I saw 9-11. I saw COVID-19. So to your listeners, we're going through a lot of change, folks. Buckle in. Don't let it freak you out. In 1980, I met a lady who did readings by a method called lithomancy. Mm -hmm. uh, I was fascinated. I'd never seen this before. She actually held a class, and it was pouring rain, and I was the only one that showed up, and it started raining heavier. So she showed me pretty quickly, <laughs> about 10, 15 minutes, and we got out of Dodge before we got flooded. So the next day, I just started practicing. But uh, that's the two books I've written about mm -hmm. psychic ability. One about how to read stones, excuse me, and the other one about my near-death experience. <laughs> Everything's backwards in this world, man. Oh, uh, Gary, listen, uh, talking about COVID-19, how did COVID-19 affect you personally? I don't think it affected me near as heavily as a lot of people because I don't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, I work at home. Uh, I, I hate traffic, so I didn't. my driving habits didn't change much. It certainly affected a lot of people. I'm not around a whole lot of people. I do a lot of stuff uh, virtual online on sure. the phone, so I wasn't really exposed to that much. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've said this. I don't believe in accidents. I don't believe in coincidences. I firmly believe COVID-19 is one of many things that higher mind sends to our planet, COVID in the terms of nature, to basically tell humankind to wise up what's really important. And we're seeing a lot of those things now. COVID, Ukraine, the economy, the, oh, yeah. you know, we're seeing a lot of, because we have to see what needs to be fixed. Uh, and that's, Kind of a painful lesson in humanity. Boy, we got some screwed up stuff. Yep. But we got at least if you know what's broken, you can fix it. So uh, it's a it's a it's a sad education. But uh, COVID didn't affect me as much as um, as much as seeing Ukraine right now. That affects me. That breaks my heart. Jesus, I wish I could push a button and make that end. You know. A lot of people do, Gary. A lot uh, of people. Ah. Uh, but I learned during my near-death experience that mm -hmm. uh, having seen Infinite Mind for a split second, and I, like I said, wrote quite a lengthy book about it, but I realized Infinite Mind has no limits. It's infinite creativity, mm -hmm. infinite time, infinite space. Uh, and so everybody and every soul gets a chance to exist you know, and do their thing. Fortunately, most of humankind does good things. 
But I have a theory I call my one nut theory, and it means one nut can screw up anything. You know, I don't know if, we see it a lot in yeah. the world. Yeah, for, for a second there, I thought you were talking about some other kind of nut, but I'm glad that you specified what kind of nut you were talking about. <laughs> uh, listen, tell us about your near-death experience, because a lot of people out there, thanks to people like you and the other guests that we've had on the show, share their experiences. And there are more and more people who are coming forward and, mm -hmm. and sharing their near-death experiences with with uh, the world, thanks to, like, yourself and, and other people who are not afraid to come forward and say, this is what happened. And even members of the medical community, Gary, are Absolutely. coming forward and talking about it. So tell us about your experience. Well, uh, I was uh, 29 at the time. It was 1977. Mm -hmm. I was quitting the band. I was going through some emotional changes and so forth. But uh, the first night was uh, toward the end of February, toward the end of January, 1977. And I know I started picking up everything my roommates were thinking about. And the next day, I, that night, I couldn't sleep. My mind was just racing. The next day, my roommate comes walking with a paper, and I read it through his eyes. Whoa! He threw it down on the table. It freaked me out. In the next 24, 48 hours, things start building up so much that I had this incredible psychic awareness of everything that was about to happen minutes before it would happen. I couldn't turn it off. I had no idea what was happening or why. I was terrified one second and then just completely inspired and enlightened the next. But life was not like normal life. Within two, three days, I was living in a different universe almost. This went on and on and on for about a week. Mm -hmm. And I could give you some incidences. That, well, yeah, I'll give you please. one short My roommate was hanging around me a lot because he was very concerned. And he kept asking me, what's it like? And it was hard to explain. You know, mm -hmm. I could imagine myself out the outside and see people walk into the door and describe them before they came into view. Uh, I, we were sitting in a restaurant and I rather than explain this. I said, look, do you know those two ladies over there in the far corner of the restaurant? He said, no. I said, me neither. I'm going to have the one who's looking away from us, the brunette, write me a letter. He said, what are you talking about? I said, Don't worry. Just write me a letter. Real harmless. Right. Well, we started eating. He forgot all about that, but I kept thinking, about that lady and drawing a little laser beam over to me, the guy in the blue shirt over here, write me a letter, harmless, harmless, harmless. But then about 10 minutes, 15 minutes later, they walked by and she threw down a napkin, you know, that she'd written on in big, bold letters. I said, why are you doing this to me? Freaked me out. I realized that was affecting a lot of people. Those people were concerned. I didn't know how to turn it off. I kept feeling these monitors, these guides, Guardian angels, something was keeping me sane because reality had gone completely away. Normal life was gone. I couldn't even imagine what it was like not having this 24 seven and I didn't sleep. You know, I was getting there by the sixth or seventh day and long story short, I was terrified. I was pacing down Guadalupe street here in Austin. I was praying. I was crying. There's a lot of people looking at me wondering what the hell's going on. Should we help this guy? And I felt like I might explode, so I didn't want him to get near me or try to help me. <laughs> and in the midst of this most incredible fear in my life, all of a sudden I felt this light above me. I looked up, and this light was these seven monitors that I'd felt. And I started having a conversation. I said, you're the monitors. And they said, yes, do you trust us? They kept asking this. And meanwhile, I'm looking around at these people the big circle had formed around me and they see me talking to an empty sky, <laughs> you know, within seconds, long story short, I was involved in head on collision with a speeding Ooh. car. I was outside my body. I saw my body getting tumbled over by the car. The whole earth turned into a little dot. I saw it 360 degrees, North, South, East, West. Cause I was expanding like a balloon in all directions, not going out like an arrow expanding. I went through the planets, the galaxies. I had no idea at this point who I was or what was happening, but it was fun. It was the most beautiful sensation. Well, wait, a, wait a second, kidding. Gary. Wait a second. Here you are. You've just been catapulted into death, basically. You're watching yourself tumbling around. You see the earth as a dot. And as you a big it. globe got down to a dot. I kept expanding. Mm -hmm. I went to the edge of the universe, which seemed like a thought. Yeah. I went through this level of consciousness that 
seem to be called the colors, mm -hmm. which is when we come in. And I realize when we our souls come in, we collapse in from all directions. We don't come we in like that. We collapse on to the mother. Oh, right. That's how we get in. All right, anyway, Gary, go ahead. We're going to have to have a bit of a cliffhanger here because I've got to take my first break. So, Gary, right, right, right here, brother. All, all right, right, give us your know. website. Give us your website. It's uh best way to get a hold of me is lithomancy.com. That's L I T H O M A N C Y. You can always Google Gary Wimmer.com, G A R Y W I M M E R.com. I'm also an actor and a writer and a musician, so you'll see my other things. But all right, and he also does windows, walls, and paints houses. I do. All right, we'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with our very special guest of this hour, Gary Wimmer. And um, welcome back to the Exxon, everyone, because this is our first show of the fall season, 2022, and we go right to 2023. Four guests a night, five nights a week. That's 40 guests. Uh, let's see. That's 20 guests a week, 80 guests a month. Something for everyone here in the Exxon with yours truly, Rob McConnell. We'll be back right on the other side of this break. Whatever you do, don't go away. you enjoy paranormal sci-fi romance yet find yourself tired of the same old themes and storylines then you won't want to miss Kahir O'Donnell's latest exciting release to taste you again alien lord Kane McKean knew the moment that his destined mate was born he watched from afar waiting for her to grow from child to woman however before she was old enough she was stolen from her home world by flush pirates Kane searched ten long years to find her held in a suspension chamber a ten-year-old girl in a woman's body. He rescued her and swore to give her time to grow up, but with his very life depending upon winning her as a mate, has he waited too long? Get your copy today. To Taste You Again by Kahira O'Donnell is now available on Amazon or kahiraodonnell.com. And welcome back. This is The Exxon. I'm Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in uh, St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. If you'd like to send me an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com on all social media platforms, exxon Radio TV. And if you'd like to watch us on Simul TV on the Exxon TV channel, it's channel 54 on Simul TV. We have movies, we have special interviews, and of course, the Exxon Radio, the Exxon Radio TV show is there. We also have Stairway to Heaven with Gwilda Riaka, a different perspective with Kevin Randall, and Gwilda's weekly show, Mission Evolution. That's at www.simultv.com. Gary Wimmer is my special guest, and uh, Gary and I have been talking about his near-death experience. Uh, he does walls, windows, washes dishes. He does a whole bunch of things. He's also an accomplished artist and an accomplished musician. Uh, Gary, oh, do you think that the fact that you're so talented and creative, that this has something to do with the abilities that you have? I don't know that I'm that talented and creative. I think I work hard. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. what I do. Uh, I was never uh, in a musical family, you know. I had six right. brothers. I could barely find a place to practice guitar. Mm -hmm. I did work hard, but I had a lot of desire to learn to play music. And when I got out of college, I had a lot of desire to not work an eight to five, even though I was an electrical engineer. Because, like I said, it was all defense work. I wanted to go change sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Try that for a decade or two. You know? And how did that work out for you? Oh, it worked out okay. I managed to make a living. <laughs> I uh, had some beautiful experiences. I probably mm -hmm. wouldn't have had if I'd have worked at the bank or at, the, as, yeah. you know, at an office or as an engineer. I, I got to travel a lot. I got to have a lot of experiences. And I think because I started studying psychic ability in college, uh, it really turned me on to... Uh, believing i could reach my dreams relatively i knew i would never be a better singer than freddie mercury you know yeah <laughs> or maybe just get a gig in the same town he might have played in that you know but i worked hard and i studied hard and i believe that anybody who really wants 
to people to learn more, grow, evolve. We have limitations, genes, history, you know. Right. Where did Gary go, Craig? Oops, so daisies, we've lost our guest. Oh, he'll come back. Oh, there he is. Welcome back. Um, do you think that your your psychic ability has played a major part in your life? Absolutely. Absolutely. It uh I couldn't ignore it. Mm -hmm. Even when I was a kid, I was having intuitive ideas and flashes. Uh and when I when I started studying psychic really way back in the sixties, reading Edgar Casey, reading cards, uh yeah, I would have never been the, the it changed me radically. Now I got six brothers, uh, and none of them are interested in psychic ability like I am. None of them write books. None of them have been actor, writer, musician. They're good, successful businessmen. They got families and kids, and uh, I don't. <laughs> you know, I traveled my whole life. I got a beautiful girlfriend. She got a daughter. You know, but uh, yeah, I, I really wanted to experience things. I really did, and. Um, I think anybody that has a lot of interest and desire to learn, to grow and evolve, you can find a path to, to find your niche more than you believe. I mean, I didn't know I could make a living playing music till I got out there and started trying it. And it was a struggle. You know, you know, Gary, I've always believed that the difference between a dream and reality is just doing it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I always say if you want to accomplish anything in life, and this is a fact, and you, I think you'll agree, Rob, it takes at least two things. One, to decide to do it, and yep. number two, to go practice. Exactly. And, and in today's society, so many people quit when they, you know, when they, when they hit a bump in the road or, or when they have a small failure, but a failure is a lesson to success. Absolutely. You cannot be successful unless you, unless you have failures. Absolutely. We learn a lot more through failures. I mean, look at science. Yeah. Oh, science goes and looks for A and they end up discovering B and C and D and they didn't know it existed. That changes the whole of mankind. Well, let's look at NASA this last week, for goodness sake. the You know, they had two launch dates for the Artemis and both dates had to be postponed, postponed and, and pushed back. But they don't say, all right, we're not going to go to the moon. What they do yeah. is they look at everything they've done. They find the error. They fix it. And away you go. Why do you think, Gary, that people are so so quick to quit instead of pursuing and, and you know saying, what the hell did I do wrong? How can I fix it? What can I do to make this better? I think the main thing is because we experience life from the inside, how we mm -hmm. feel, how we think, uh, what we believe. Uh, and if we get the inside working, we can make that outside work. So the people who are fatalistic. Everybody's been tripped. Everybody's had failure. You have no idea how many bands would not hire me because uh -huh. I couldn't sing good. And they're now done. Good. I'm going to be a soloist. I'm going to learn to play piano and be a, a ham. And that's what I was. It takes decision. It takes commitment. It takes practice. Mm -hmm. More than anything, it takes believing, meditating, being yeah. calm, asking the universe to help you. You have to ask the universe to help you. You have to ask your guides. You do. And the reason is real clear because they don't want to break in on your free will. If you want to grow and evolve, it says ask and you shall receive everything. So much is impossible with attitude, perception, hopes, dreams, and you can't change yesterday and you can't change other people. So work on what you can change. That's you know, talking about playing the piano, uh, Gary, has anybody ever told you you look like Billy Joel? No. <laughs> well, that, that's you because you know, know. that's just another that's just another thing I thought I'd throw into the mix. <laughs> um, Nobody's ever told me I sing like Billy Joel either. So. <laughs> um, tell us about lithomancy. How did you get involved with lithomancy? Well, I started giving readings early seventies with a little bit of trow, a little bit of astrology, and mostly a regular deck of playing cards because mm -hmm. it was real simple. In nineteen eighty, I met a lady. I was going through some tough challenges and I met a lady who gave readings and she gave me a lithomancy reading and I'd never seen that and I thought wow this is an interesting art and so uh, she held a class it was pouring rain mm -hmm. I was the only person that showed up she showed me real quick how she does it with 16 stones that represent sun moon mercury mars venus jupiter saturn neptune uranus pluto those are planet stones and there's six personal stones love life 
lot commitment timing in place. You charge them up in your hand, you drop them. And as you can see in this book here, I make a little circle of leather. You drop yep. them like that. I read them from the center, which would be right here, up to the top, and then around like a clock in 12 weeks. And so that's basically the system in two minutes or less. I wrote a book on it and I like it because it's real intuitive. You know, I can, people could ask a question. I can go from one stone to the next. This stone may represent mm -hmm. this in relation to that and this in relation to that. Real flexible. It allows you to really use your intuition and not be hung up in rules. Uh, you know. How long does it take you to do a reading, Gary? I have done readings at parties where I'll do like five minutes for 20 people, 30 people. Uh, and I've done about the longest reading I do is about an hour. Uh, right now I book for 30 minutes, 45 minutes or an hour. I record the reading and email people a link. And again, you can find all about it on my website, GaryWimmer.com. Uh, but I've done a couple of things where I've done, you know, long, long days where I do like parties and functions. I'm doing less of that anymore because um, uh, the driving, you know, people COVID functions slowed down a lot. Everything did, uh, but I've been pretty active on the phone. So I stay pretty busy and thank you universe. <laughs> Tell me Gary, do you have your stones in your bag handy? I have them sitting over here. Oops. Did you fall off the chair? Are you still there? Hello. Oh, there you are. I don't know if you can see this. I can. And so that can is my stones. That is the little piece of leather. That's what I drop them on. It's hard mm -hmm. to, of course, if I hold it level, right? Everything's right. going to fall off. Of course. But I lay it down. Uh, I put that circle of leather around. I mm -hmm. charge up the stones. The only thing I ask the person to do, I'm talking to on the phone, is just say drop oh. one time. And I drop them. And I like to start. I don't, I don't want to know anything about the person. I start cold. I feel better. I can trust my intuition and, and trust what the stones mean. And of course, if people ask questions, I will ask. Uh, now, everybody's got a different psychic perspective. Mm -hmm. I don't try to nail down exact dates and times and names because that changes a lot. What I try to focus on and what I feel like I really uh, am good at is seeing what people are going through and why and what life's trying to show them. And I probably center on that a lot because that's the questions I've always asked. You know, if I know I'm on the right track, I can figure sure. the details. You know? Listen, when we come back from this commercial break that I've got to go to in a couple of minutes, how about giving me a reading? I'll do it. Okay. I'll do it. And All right. If I, if I can, I'll, uh, yeah, let me set it up and I'll be ready. Uh, we'll have a couple of minutes between uh, during the commercial time, so that'll give you time to do the setup. And once again, if you'd like to contact uh, Gary Exonation, go to his website, GaryWimmer.com. And there was another website that you gave us at the beginning. Oh, it's Lithomancy.com. That's L-I-T-H-O-M-A-N-C-Y. Dot com. All well, right, Gary and I will be back on the other side of this uh, short break as the Exxon continues with yours truly, Rob McConnell, from our broadcast center and studios in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. And we're on the Talkstar Radio Network, and you can watch the entire Exxon TV channel only one place, and that's on Simul TV. And for more information about Simul TV and the great channels that they have available to you, including the um, movies on demand by Sony, great movies. Just go to www.simultv.com. Like I said, I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with Gary Wimmer, and he's going to uh, do a reading for me. This should be very interesting. I'm Rob McConnell. Don't go away. <laughs> So I was watching the X-Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens and they kept repeating to me over and over again, Simultv.com, Simultv.com. What's Simultv.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean Simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. 
SIMULTV.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a SIMULTV.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now that you mention it, I remember now last night I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great-grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about SIMULTV.com. She even spelled it out for me. SIMULTV.com, Sonny Boy. SIMULTV.com. SIMULTV.com, Sonny Boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. SIMULTV.com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about SIMULTV.com. SIMULTV.com. And welcome back once again, simultv.com. And I know how to spell UFO, UFO. Gary Wimmer is our special guest, and uh, Gary is joining me from where in the world are you these days, Gary? I'm in Austin, Texas right now. Austin, Texas. Uh, all my exes live in Texas. Did you know that's <laughs> everybody on so All right. What, what are you doing there? I'm trying to set up a mic stand so I can oh. put the, the, the camera down here on the stones if I can. Oh, sure. We'll give you a couple of seconds. Oh, time's up. Just kidding. Once again, Gary you Wimmer, if you'd like to contact Gary, his website is garywimmer.com. And he also has www.lithomancy.com. And don't forget, we have some great programming on the Exxon TV channel. We have, let me see, Stairway to Heaven with Gwilda Wiaka. They're just 15 minute vignettes telling you all about what's going on in the world today. Some great topics. And once again, that's www.stairwaytoheavenmedia.com. Oh, I've got to check that out. I'm not sure. And uh, Gwild also has her other show, which is followed by a great number of people mission evolution and we also have kevin randall the one and only kevin randall who talks about ufos things like go bump in the night when you're up in space aliens alien abductions cattle mutilation and much more that's a different perspective all these shows are available for you all you need to do is go to www.xzbn.net all right gary we're back to you my friend all right rob while you've been talking i've been charging these up in my hand you can see this circle Yep. And all you have to do, Rob, one time real clearly is just say drop. When you say drop, I'll drop these stones and I'll tell you what I say. Drop. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to start here at the top. This is the uh, start of this week. Right here in the center mm -hmm. is Mercury and the Commitment Stone. Mercury's communication. Commitments are your business. This is the play stone showing your business in your place and your commitment to it. And almost like a new sense of communicate. Well, you're opening up your new show again. That's what it is. You know, do you see this triangle? Yeah, I do. Triangles represent third eye. This is the magic stone looking out in the future, saying the T's are crossed. The I's are dotted. Good results over here by about third and fourth week is Saturn. Part of this triangle. Mm -hmm. Saturn has to do with like learning, responsibility, time, place, a new foundation. So you're building up that. And the uh, over here by about the eighth, ninth week is the emotional new sense of freedom you have with your new show, with life improving for you. And again, how do you get there? Right here in the center is new decisions and techniques. I think you're starting a, a cycle of... Uh, Good expansion, good luck, and I think you're starting to discover a lot of your own spirituality in the process, even though you're busy. That's oh. what triangles represent. And you got a lot of good magic and got a lot of good luck with new organization. So right in the center, and I think the Mars stone here is you looking back in order to know what to, to tweak better for the future, mm -hmm. you know, uh, as a reference. So over the next couple of weeks here, I feel like this uh, the, the new show, the commitment, the timing is is uh, taking a lot of your energy, but by the third and fourth and fifth week, it feels like it's taken off like a rocket because the, everything's tweaked up. Uh, this is organization planning. It also feels like a lot of um, healing and freshness over love issues, emotional issues, you know. This is Pluto, and the whole world's going through Pluto, which is going from one extreme to the next. So uh, 
I think you're making that progress in terms of organization, in terms of decision making, and in terms of love. Uh, a lot of new luck. This is uh, Jupiter, by the way, and it's separate. Yeah, so Jupiter's right. great expansion. Uh, so this first week or two is a continuous of your work, your commitment to around your place. By the second and third week, it's the organization falls in place, so it kind of takes on a uh, the next level of life almost on its own. Of course, you got to work still, but of course, the momentum to build up, the, the new systems tweaked up. Fourth and fifth and sixth week here, I think you're. Uh, I feel like you're getting a whole new uh, audience, you know, making a lot of breakthroughs, mm. uh, more people, more audience, more breakthroughs, and more emotional uh, empowerment. I know you're busy, Rob, but you got writing ability. I don't know if you ever use it, but you do have writing ability. Well, I, you know, it's funny you say that because I have written a number of books, Gary. I, oh, I didn't know that. Have you? Yeah, we publish a newspaper every month. Ding. And bing. That's why it's so strong here. Yeah. It's very strong. It's the base of this, almost like this new life for yourself. Of, of uh, It's a lot of healing. It's a lot less stress. It's a lot better communication. So I think with business, with love, I think you're opening up a whole new magic portal within yourself that maybe you didn't suspect that would kind of through your guests and through your, your interest in your work and sharing, it's kind of coming back to you. I see. <laughs> it's you're providing all this magic for other people. So, you, so the universe is providing like a, a fresh new path to you, uh, updated one. Does that make sense to you? It sure does, Gary. It, re it really does. And that's short and sweet, but that's how I look at it visually. Now, if, if these stones landed in a different direction, I probably would have felt something different about it. Mm -hmm. it if you asked a question, I may go to this stone or this stone or this stone, depending on it. But a lot of times if, if uh, people ask questions, I use a simple deck of cards. See, right? The first card, two of hearts. Right. That's you, brother. That's you and me talking. That's a good relationship. How's your business going? Oh, you're going through a bunch of uh, changes so you can get power. You know, it's a temporary condition, the confusion, the newness. The end results are ace of clubs. Clubs is friendship. Mm -hmm. And you are the ace, brother, bringing it to people. So, yeah, I read cards. When I was in Europe, a lot of times I didn't have my stones with me, and I would read whatever people would lay out on a table, a guitar <laughs> string, an ashtray, a, you know, a trumpet. So, Gary, am I correct in saying that basically the stones and cards are just tools that you use that anything can be? Oh, nice shoes. That anything can be <laughs> used. <laughs> I'm gonna put the camera back here. All right. Oh, you're upside down now, Gary. Well, there, there we go. go. <laughs> Thought you went to China there for a second, and you were upside down. Um, back on Earth. There you go. Welcome back, Gary, and thank you so much for the reading, my friend. I I sincerely appreciate it. Um, so so I was I was saying that the stones or the cards or anything that is used including crystal balls is this something that that you focus on so that your inner psychic ability is able to better come through it's more like tuning into a particular frequency mm -hmm. because if you use tarot cards or stones or some medium because that was originally called the medium right now they call the person the medium what used to be referred to as a medium is the intermediary so you can focus on this particular situation or question or person mm -hmm. and not everything it's kind of like a filter. You right. Know? That's the way I see it. That's the way I use it. No. Because there's times during my near-death experience, I got everything at once. And it's too much to handle. You know? How did you handle all that information that was coming to you from places that you had no idea where it was coming from? Well, it was a, it was a, a, indeed a challenge. I, mm -hmm. uh, I felt these monitors, these guides. I felt some higher level of consciousness concerned aware helpful right. paying attention i never saw them except one time right before i was hit by the car uh but that was that was giving me some courage i started hearing words like verification mm -hmm. like my guides were saying you always have to kind of verify and make sure you're still on the planet <laughs> and float it off somewhere uh i got signs like keep your eyes on the light yeah. so i would keep my eyes on the light and I got signs of uh, no matter what I was thinking, I could see somebody or something external that seemed to be mirroring in perfect 
imagery exactly what I was thinking or curious about. So I saw this relationship between the internal world and the external world that everybody has. I just got a free show to it and I didn't know I'd even signed up for it. In fact, eight months later, after my near death experience, one thing I did not know is why me, you know, what did I do to deserve this? And it turned out what I did was I had curiosity. I asked my whole life and my guide said, that's the reason you got this trip. You wanted to know you could handle the truth. And we took you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Universe. All right, Gary, stand by. You and I, I have to take our final break for this hour. And explanation, if you'd like to find out more about our guest this hour, just visit him online at www.garywimmer.com or lithomancy.com, L-I-T-H-O-M-A-N-C-Y.com. I'm Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon, a, a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And we come to you Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern right here on the Exxon Broadcast Network, Exxon TV and Simul TV. I'll be back after this break. Don't go away. be accosted in her bed and abducted by aliens was the last thing Michelle expected. Yet the fateful morning of her destined death changed everything. Lord Lan Ramos, Alpha King of Vidar, the monstrous befanged alien looming over her bed, was her destined mate come to save her from certain death. He is a telepathic mute shifter. Can Michelle accept him and his animal? Once on Lan's home planet, Michelle becomes increasingly psychic, revealing her as the fabled Oracle of Vidar. As factions conspire to destroy them, will they overcome mounting threats? Will Michelle's growing gifts save them or ultimately destroy her? Don't miss this sci-fi shifter romance with charismatic and engaging characters. Get your copy today, The Oracle of Vidar, available on Amazon or kahiraodonnell.com. That's C-A-H-I-R-A-O-D-O-N-N-E-L-L.com. Welcome back, everyone. I'm back here with Gary Wimmer. And uh, once again, if you'd like to find out more about Gary, visit his website at www.garywimmer.com or www.lithomancy.com. Uh, first of all, Gary, I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. We've got about ooh, 10 minutes left in this uh, hour. Um, my pleasure being with you, Rob. My pleasure. You all right. Tell me, my friend, when you... you Go ahead. With all the people that you've met over the years and the, and the people that you've touched, how does it make you feel inside when you realize that you're part of helping this person to live a better life? I feel good, Rob, because I have, I have asked so many questions of the universe. I've asked for so much help for so long. I've gotten a lot of help from the universe. Of course, I've asked things that were in for my range. I didn't ask, you know, like I said, joking a while ago, I didn't ask to wake up and sing like Freddie Mercury. Uh, so, yeah, people have a lot more power than they believe. I steered through a lot of this chaos during this experience by keeping my mind aware that there's something more powerful than me that probably knows what's going on and might have an eye on me. At least that's what I was hoping for. It turned out that to be the absolute truth. I can't express enough how I encourage all your listeners to believe in higher mind, believe in your spirit guides, believe in, it doesn't matter what religion, it's not a religious thing, it's a your connection to infinite mind. When I saw infinite mind and realized every one of us is connected to it, yeah. that was the most profound discovery in my life. In fact, that's the most beautiful day of my life ever. And of, and of course, belief is the strongest power in the universe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. Well, if you want to hit a home run, the best way to do it is believe you can do it. Yeah. Step up with a big bat and a big attitude, but absolutely believe mm -hmm. you can do it. it. No guarantee, but it sure enhances your chances. You know? Gary, how can someone listening tonight 
who may believe or may think they have the uh, psychic abilities, how can they enhance their psychic abilities? How can they, how can they tune them? Practice, practice, practice. And uh, I'll give you an example. This may not be up to the level of your listeners, but why not? About 10 years ago on Sunday, all the news shows ended and there's nothing but football and I don't watch football much. So I turned off the sound. Yeah. And I started realizing, you know, in in five seconds, I'm going to play. A, I'm going to see a replay of this play. So can I jump ahead in time and see that replay? See who's taking the ball where? And I practiced on that with the sound off. And I realized I could do it. I couldn't get every play, but I could get a fair amount of them. It's practice, practice. Assume that everything in life can teach you something, show you something, because it can. Assume that you can start learning the symbolism of whether it's a flower or a smile or a phone call. There ain't any accidents. Everything's connected. And if we start, and, and most of all, mm -hmm. meditate. Meditate. Turn your logical mind off for five minutes a day. Lay down, sit down, breathe deep. And when you feel your mind start thinking everything, bring it right back to here, now breathing. Very important to cut your mind off for five minutes a day. That's every spiritual guru. And now, as you were even saying a while ago, something about science, uh, they acknowledge that power of meditation now. You're healthier. You're happier. You're not a hypochondriac. Meditate, uh, ask, practice. I think a lot of people have the misconception about meditation because of the, the influence of the yogis during the 1960s where you had to do the, you know, you had to do the lotus position, you had to do this, you had to do that. And it's, it's very simple. Meditation is very simple. Yeah. You know, it, it basically, when you go to church and pray, you're meditating. Yeah. It's just one very simple form. Just relax, cut off the damn mind for five minutes a day, two minutes a day, 30 seconds at a time. Right before I was hit by the speeding car during my near-death experience, mm -hmm. my mind was racing trying to figure out why I was going through this, what the hell was happening, where I was going to end up. I mean, and I kept feeling this curiosity going around my brain until at a point my whole mind said, well, the answer ain't here. Every synapse connected to every synapse and we can't figure it out. And that was actually kind of liberating. It really was. I thought, I can't get the answer yeah. in my logical mind, which correlates to meditation. Turn the logical mind off for five minutes, two minutes. It's a technique, but it's very healthy. That's one thing people can definitely do. Ask your guides to help. I ask them to show me signs all the time. I find stuff that I'm missing. I, 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 I've, I have miracles going on all the time because I believe in practice. And they don't call me and tell me where my keys are, but I walk around and find them. They don't tell me where this gig is, but I, I find stuff. Stuff happens more than it would by a chance by asking, by practicing, by believing, and by developing your psychic ability. Because when you develop your psychic and spiritual ability, which, by the way, is unlimited, as opposed to a lot of things in life, you get better practical results. It's not to get a gold star in heaven. It's to make life work better here now, period. Is there a difference between a guide and an angel? I think so, but I think a lot of what we do is put words on things. We do, mm -hmm. we break psychic phenomena up into 20 different categories. We break right. soul up because we categorize. Once you're out of the body, once you're out of time and space, things aren't so clearly defined as this or this. They can be, and they take on that role so we can understand it because we can't steer through an infinite pudding <laughs> or mass of consciousness in our little rocket ship and know where to land. So uh, we can learn a lot from, from asking our guides to help us from practicing, from believing from. Uh, and I ask my guides all the time. Once I realized how real they were, I was not shy, but I asked for reasonable things. I didn't ask, like I said, to be a multimillionaire tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Ask practice and work. Did I wander off the question or did I hit it, Rob? <laughs> In my opinion, you hit it right on. Okay, thank you. You hit that home run. Gary, we've got about uh, four minutes left. Where do you go from here? What's next with you? You've done so much. You've accomplished a lot. You, you've touched a lot of lives in a positive manner. You've shared your stories with the world. What's next? 
probably just continue doing that. I'm I'm not too physically active. I'm 74. I'm a little old. I don't like to drive. I enjoy helping people. I enjoy writing. I still do a lot of writing. Uh, but I do enjoy inspiring people more than anything because, you know, I went through such severe depression in my 20s. I'm bipolar. I've been to hell and back with depression. Uh, and I'm the happiest person on the planet. So I know that no matter what you're going through or who you are, what your circumstances are, you're not stuck there. Okay. If you lose an arm, you ain't going to grow an arm back, but you can grow a mind that'll do 10 times what that arm will do. Maybe not a great analogy, but that's a fact. It's all in your mind, your heart, your soul, your intentions, your thoughts. Get that machinery working. Everything works. What are your final words for the Exxon Nation tonight, Gary? Stay inspired. Don't let all the crazy insanity of this revolution freak you out because we have to see everything that's broken to fix it. And we, again, we're getting an education, but do what you can do to make things better. Don't worry about what you can't change. Mm -hmm. Think about what you can change. And everybody's attitude, good attitude, for example, if everybody wishes Ukraine the, the best, that group mind does have an effect. It does have. Think positive, think creative, quit worrying. Everybody worries, but we don't have to stay there. You know, that's the point. Everybody hits the wrong note, but you don't have to keep hitting them. You know, you know earlier you and I were talking about um, everything that's going on in the world today that is we're, we're receiving a lesson. Is uh, it a absolutely. lesson or are we receiving a warning? Both. I think it's both. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty clearly both. You know, nature and, and the higher mind is talking to us. You know, our higher mind wants this planet to work. But we also got free will. And we can do stupid yeah. shit or smart stuff. You know, I mean, that's what it boils down to. Hopefully the world through these. Well, what do you want to call them? Challenges, I suppose. Hopefully the world is learning to uh, get over the challenge, accomplish it, make mm -hmm. sense of it, make use of it rather than fight and argue and accuse everybody else. But that's part of the process, too. We have to realize that. You can't really blame things on anybody else. Well, you can, but the buck stops here. You're the one who experiences it. So you're the one that has to tune up inside. As Shakespeare said, to thine own self be true. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, Gary. Once again, let our listeners know how they can find you and where they can buy your books. Uh, they can buy them on Amazon or uh, Kindle. They're both in both Kindle and Amazon. Uh you can find me by going to lithomancy.com, L-I-T-H-O-M-A-N-C-Y.com, or you can go to garywimmer.com, G-A-R-Y-W-I-M-M-E-R.com, and you can see how to get in touch with me. Uh, like I said, I'm also an actor and a writer and a musician, so if you want to find out about my psychic ability, mm -hmm. and you go to garywimmer.com, click on the, the psychic link. It'll take you right there. And, and of course, if you'd like somebody who looks like Billy Joel to come to your party and play piano and sing like Billy Joel, uh, don't call Gary. Don't call Gary. Flawlessly. Exactly <laughs> like Billy Joel. <laughs> Gary, as always, my friend, great talking to you. Until the next time you and I meet, my friend, take care of yourself. You too. Love your smile. Love your energy, Rob. Love what you're doing. Keep <laughs> at it, brother. All right, my friend. Take care, Gary. And Exo Nation, if you'd like more information about our guest uh, this hour, Gary Wimmer, visit him at www.garywimmer.com and lithomancy.com. And his books are available on amazon.com. When I come back at 10 o'clock, we're going to be joined by Dr. Shelley Kerr. We're going to be talking about past life regression, reincarnation. And, and Dr. Kerr is a very interesting lady, and we've had the pleasure of having uh, Shelly on many times before, and it's always a pleasure having her back on, and I'm so happy to have her on tonight, the first day, the first show of our new season. I'm Rob McConnell. I'll be back on the other side of this break as the Exxon continues from our broadcast center in Hamilton. I'm sorry. No, no Hamilton, no more Craig. No, that's right. We're in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. <laughs>